Hello and welcome to this our video on graph theory basics, part of our general maths course. Now my name's Darren, maths guru. Really good to see you. If this is the first video you have watched, if not, hey, welcome back. Now what I'm going to ask you to do before I start is do me a favour and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> it's a maths video, very few people watch, but by clicking subscribe, and if you need to turn notifications off, it just lets me know that someone has actually watched this. And leave a comment if you can on YouTube and just let me know, what am I doing well? What am I doing badly? Now as you can see behind me at this moment in time, there is the basics of what we're going to cover. Understand what a graph is, understand why a graph is important, yada yada yada, you guys can read. But what I need you to know is that the general maths course next year at year 12, and if you're doing further maths or heard of it as the old further maths course, it's changed. This is massive. This is such an important module. And if you get it right now, you'll smash it next year. The trick to this, believe it or not, is your summary book. Write down all the definitions. And the first five or six videos of this series are all just definition after definition after definition. Okay, it helps if you understand it, I promise you. But write it in your summary book. And the good news is at mathsguru.com you can download all of the notes that I put on behind me for your summary book. Result! Head over there now, tell your mates, but subscribe. Okay, let's get into this. Now, when I got in uh, my very first car in the United Kingdom, it was awesome. I paid thousands of pounds, yes, pounds, to get integrated GPS. A little bit sickened because not long after that, TomTom Tom got relieved. And a little, anyway, so but I was driving along one day and uh, I put in the journey and you know, like he does, he goes at the next intersection, turn left. Well, my nan was in the car with me and she said, who's talking to me? And I went, no one's talking to me. She went, no, Darren, I've just heard someone talk. Who else is in this car? That was a bit weird because unless they'd been in the boot of my car, yeah, she pretty much knew there was no one else in my car, maybe losing it early, who knows? And I tried to explain to her that the car now had this great power of directing me from A to B and she was having none of it. She literally thought that I'd actually kidnapped somebody and put them in the boot of my car. Whole new discussion. <laughs> anyway, but have you ever wondered how GPS works? How does it know to get from A to B? Well, actually there are all these road networks in your maps and what it actually does is it just fires off every road. It's like, well, you're here. I'm just gonna go along every road. And it goes and adds all these different roads together. And after a while it goes, nah, this is too far. It's nowhere near where I want to go. And it finds the shortest journey. Now that's really simple, but it's gonna use this stuff here, graph theory basics, right? It's about roads, it's about towns, it's about vertices, it's about edges. If you've got that, you are sorted and you go, well, hold on a moment, what are you talking about? Well, there's this amazing guru dude called Euler, come to him in a moment, who basically was sitting one day having his cup of coffee in this German city of Königsberg. Sorry if I've mispronounced that. Um, and basically he was like, hmm, can I get from this island to all the other islands over the five, six, seven bridges I can see? Again, he may not have spoken like that in any way, shape or form. My humble apologies, my accents are not my thing. And basically what he was saying was, well, if we consider this as A, B, C, and let's say D for a moment. And let's say they are five main islands or places. Can I actually get from B to A to C to D by crossing all of those bridges only once? Now, why don't you pause the video and have a go? Yeah, I'm gonna just sit here idly for a moment and wait. Did you do it? Okay, if you did, that's awesome, if not. But basically, can you, starting at any particular point, get to all the other points by crossing the bridges? Well, let's have a go. I'm gonna start at C. That seems really stupidly easy. There we go. Oh, I'm gonna go down here. Oh, this is easy, isn't it? I'm gonna go up here and, hold on a moment, I've got a problem, because if I go here, uh, the only way I'm gonna to get to this bridge is if I go backwards. And actually, he sat there and he was like, oh, Jeff and Nick, this is hard. Why is this possible? Why can I not get over all of these bridges? And he came up with, well, A, a much simpler diagram. Now, there are a couple of ways there, and I don't know whether you've done it, but I can promise you, as it stands at this moment in time, there is no way to get over all of those bridges by crossing each bridge once. Mm. And that's very much what graph theory is all about. So here, if you look at it, we're gonna make the problem simpler. So the first thing is, you know, Euler was like, I'm not drawing bridges every time, I'm not a studio artist. I can't draw that, I'm gonna make it easier. And that's what he did. He said, well, okay, every point or every place I'm gonna go, I'm gonna call it, well, initially a dot, but actually he said, I'm gonna call that a vertex. Oh, so there is a vertex. The next thing he said was, right, everywhere I go, every road that connects these or every bridge in this situation, I'm gonna say they're joined by an edge. So in that situation here, there is, an edge, oh, whoop whoop. 
And having drawn that diagram much, much simply said, well, okay, now I can represent my journey from A to B, for example, by using these edges. So if we go back here, yes, what we notice is that, well, let's go back for a moment. If I look here, here's my A and here's my B, there are two bridges, two different bridges I can cross over to get from A to B. And that's very much what happens here. So if we look now at this, there is one connection and there is another. And again, going back, if we keep flicking back, we've got these two bridges here that go from A to C. Well, obviously in my, in my diagram here, I've called that D. And so again, there's these two connections from A to D. Where do we get these other connections from? Well, again, I've got this one connection. So if we actually make that, what was that? That was actually D. And if we make that C now, well, what I now have is my one connection between A and C, my one connection between B and C, and my one connection between D and C. And so there we go, there's my one connection between B and C, my one connection between A and C, and my one connection between D and C. Woo! So having made the diagram simpler, can we now try highlighting, for example, to see if we can get all the way around it? So if I highlight in yellow, let's start, let's start at A, and I'm gonna to go to D, and I'm gonna go along this edge here, and I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna go around, and I'm gonna go around, and I'm gonna go, oh shucks, I've missed an edge. And he was like, well, hold on a moment. There's got to be some sort of mathematical description as to why this doesn't work. And I'm like, mm-hmm, there is. Now, what he then decided was, well, we're going to look here at the connections between vertices and edges. And he said, I'm going to come up with something called degrees. And he said, well, okay, I'm going to label that as the degree of B. And I'm going to find out the degree of C. And I'm going to find the degree of D. And I'm going to find the degree of A. And what he said was that every row that leads into or out of a particular vertex or point or place is going to be a degree. Uh -huh. So if we look at B, we can see that there's one road leading into and out of it there, one there, and there's one there. So he said, well, let's call the degree of B3. Okay. What about the degree of C? Well, again, we've got one, two, three going in there. There is three going in. The degree of A, flipping it, that looks a lot. But again, remember, think of it as rows going into or out of. There's one coming in there, one there, one there, one there, and there's one there. So that would then have degree five. And then this one here, one, two, three, and that was degree three. And then he went, well, hold on a moment, they're all odd numbers. And by that, I mean, they were one, three, five, seven, nine. Those are your odd numbers. And he noticed that that was a three, that was a three, that was a three, and that was a five. And when he went away and did a lot more research into this, he found that for those particular diagrams or graphs in this situation, where all the vertices had an odd degree, meant that you actually couldn't traverse around it. Now again, if you want to, there is Leonard Euler. He's gonna feature quite a lot in this particular series of video, so it's not a bad idea to get to know him. Alternatively, like me, you're like, yeah, why would I? Is it important? Is it gonna be in the exam? Probably not, moving on. All right, and this is very much what he noticed. He noticed, again, that if we look at the dots on our graph and we looked at the degrees of those, if they were all of an odd degree, then basically we couldn't get all the way around that without going over one of those edges more than once. And you're gonna say, well, why is that important to me? Think a postman. Do you think a postman's gonna to wanna to go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and up and down the street, the same street delivering mail? No, you wanna do it in a way that's gonna minimize your journey, not going backwards and overs. If I go around, oh, Disneyland, I love theme parks. You wanna go around it in the best possible way without repeating sections. So actually this graph stuff becomes really, really important. And believe it or not, that's the end of this first video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you found it useful. If you have, subscribe, leave a comment, let your mates know. Again, no one watches maths videos. I'm literally talking to myself, aren't I? But if you can subscribe, and even if you turn off notifications, I would be deeply, deeply grateful. All right, I'm not done. Hopefully you'll see you in the next video. I'm signing off now. Stay safe.